All right, hello everybody. Welcome to our next lesson here, uh, Americans and Leisure in Post-War America. Okay, so our objectives and standards to describe leisure activities of Americans in the post-war period and explain how new advertising techniques led to an increase in consumerism. And take a moment here to read over the standards, if you would, please. <clears throat> Desired results, uh, what types of leisure activities did Americans enjoy in the post-war period? So free time. So Americans had more leisure and free time in the post-war period since they were working less. Um, they'd actually worked more and earned time off from work. Uh, Americans also own technologies that are going to help them conserve time, such as we're going to see uh, the washing machine come about, we're going to see lawnmowers, we're going to see other inventions that are going to allow people to cut down even simple things like housework or chores and um, allow them to you know, have more free time to spend with their families or to just relax by themselves. Recreation. Uh, millions of Americans also spend time with different activities. People became involved in uh, newer activities that you know people had been involved in before, but you know we're going to see these activities increase more. Uh, things such as fishing, bowling. We'll see the rise of bowling alleys, uh, hunting, golf, and boating. Uh, we'll also see Americans begin to attend uh, sporting events again, just like in the 1920s following World War One, where people were you know participating in sports and going to sporting activities. Americans in the 1950s are going to do the same. Uh, others became involved in reading books or magazines on topics such as cooking or religion. <coughs> and they also became fascinated with um, science fiction such as outer space or aliens and things like that, uh, mysteries and romance as well. So a culture on the move. Uh, cheaper gasoline and more automobiles are going to make an American culture that is mobile. Remember, again, back in the 1920s, we saw people using automobiles to travel more and do more things in their free time. The same is going to be very true in the 1950s. Uh, people are going to be able to afford automobiles with, again, the rise of their income and working more. Um, and also the creation of the suburbs. The, excuse me, creation of the suburbs will require people to buy automobiles to commute for jobs. Uh, or even for shopping or doctor's appointments. Uh, people will begin to have to have an automobile since they're not in the city anymore. No, I can't take the subway or the, you know, the trolley. Uh, they need to have an automobile to get around from place to place. Now, with more automobiles on the road, there was a need for more roads, obviously. Um, and local and state governments began building roads to connect people with their daily needs. Uh, President Eisenhower signed the Interstate Highway Act uh, and this act, which was signed in 1956, created 41,000 miles of national highway. Um, a lot of these roads are the things you see today, you know, better roads and uh, interstate system allowed people to communicate and travel more. Um, but of course, the rise of automobiles and highways will also lead to pollution and traffic accidents as well. But we will see people driving more. We'll see teenagers, you know, driving more and doing more things uh, with automobiles, such as going to the drive-in movie theater. Now, and maybe you are, sir, are familiar with some of this, maybe you are not. Um, when I was a kid, there were still some uh, drive-in movies around, um, but, you know, you would take your car to the drive-in movie theater. You know, you'd pay when you got at the little toll gate. Um, typically, they showed maybe one or two movies on the weekend. Um, you would go and you'd sit in your car, just like these people are here, um, you know, I suppose, and, you know, you would have your radio or a little radio that you could connect to your window, um, and they would play the, the sound to the movie. And, you know, there was a, you know, a concession stand where you could have popcorn and drinks and snacks. There was a bathroom. Um, again, you know, I remember this as a kid. You know, these were around even when I was a kid. Unfortunately, there's not very many more around anymore, if, if any, at this point. Um, but they were something that people liked to do for leisure activities, especially teenagers. This was very popular in the 1950s for teenagers to get together to go to the drive-in movie on a Friday night and watch the newest Hollywood movie that was coming out. Um, but again, you know, something that people of all ages enjoy doing as well. <clears throat> so spending. By the middle of the 1950s, many Americans were middle class and they're looking to spend their money. Again, just like in the 1920s after World War I, people are looking to spend their money and show how much they can afford, how much they can buy. People began buying new appliances, such as washing machines, dishwashers, blenders, freezers, uh, toaster ovens, uh, you know, all types of different appliances, vacuum cleaners, uh, anything that they thought was a neat new little gadget or anything like that they were buying. 
Um, they also bought things that didn't have to necessarily do with cleaning or cooking. Uh, they bought things such as televisions. We'll see the rise of television, which we'll talk about uh, next week as well with some different movie stars and television stars and stuff like that. And, of course, clothing as well. We'll see a change in fashion. One of the things that caused people to buy more and spend more was marketing techniques. So marketing. Um, companies began using the new strategy called planned obsolescence. This is still kind of used today if we think about it. Um, it will display new items and told consumers that their old items were obsolete or not good anymore. Um, for example, in the 1950s, people would show uh, or companies would show new cars and other items like the new washing machine or vacuum cleaner that a consumer might want to buy. Um, and Americans began to purchase these new items without really having really, you know, even used their old ones. You know, you might have bought a vacuum cleaner a week ago, but maybe a month later they come out with a new vacuum and you say, oh, that one's better. So I'll buy that. Well, you hadn't really used your old one. It's not really broken. It's not really useless. <clears throat> And even think about this today um, with technology, cell phones, laptops, iPods, iPads, um, you know, everything, you know, even televisions. Um, you know, when we see the newest cell phone come out, we all go, oh, I want that. You know, it does this, this and this. It has this app. It takes this with my I can do this with my pictures or I can do this with my music. Um, and we're quick to just, you know, kind of maybe run out to the store to go buy it, even though our old phones, we consider them quote unquote old phones, but even though our old phones really, you know, aren't really that old or obsolete, you know, they, they really kind of do the same thing, but maybe the new phone has one new, uh, element that makes us want to buy it. So again, it's still a, a technique that's used today, but this really starts to come about in the 1950s. Um, and many people are going to buy items on credit, just like they did in the 1920s as well. So advertisements. Advertisements are also everywhere in the 1950s. Uh, we'll see uh, a rise in advertising companies um, and advertisements, you know, in magazines and on television and newspapers and things like that. Um, and of course, they benefit from this large amount of buying. Um, and like we said, ads are everywhere. Um, and also television will help with advertising, cereal commercials for kids, toy commercials for kids. Uh, you know, the the mom or the wife is home, you know, cleaning and she sees a new ad for, you know, a new type of uh, soap or something like that. And, you know, she, she wants to go buy it. So here's an example of uh, an advertisement from the 1950s, uh, the new Hoover vacuum. Again, looks kind of old to us today. But again, the 1950s, this was the new newest and brandest thing that, you know, women and everybody wanted to have. Um, so, again, just an example of advertisements there in the 1950s. So think about what types of leisure activities that Americans enjoy in the post-war period. What were we doing? What were they spending their money on? Um, and that will help you answer your question for today. And please try your best on the other ones as well. Let me know of any questions or concerns. Talk to you soon.